Hi everybody! Today we are taking a look at Hallucigenia Sparsa. Well, not the real Hallucigenia Sparsa. We are looking at my low poly 3D model of this wonderful ancient worm, the star of the Cambrian era, Hallucigenia. So you can see for this model, I've just started with a cylinder with eight faces. That's usually where I prefer to start. Um, it just gives me the rounded kind of shape that I'm looking for, but I also get the hard edges and angles that I also want to see with a low poly model. And I've used Control R to add a whole bunch of loop cuts to the middle of Hallucigenia's body. Um, I'm basically just adding those so I can sort of plan out where I'm going to extrude all of those wonderful spikes you see along Hallucigenia's back, as well as his wonderful spaghetti noodle legs that you can see um, on his underside. I've added a couple more loop cuts there on the neck, edited them with proportional editing turned on with keystroke O, um, and that just allows me to taper segments in um, along certain loop cuts without getting harsh drop-offs. So now you can see I'm starting to extrude some of these faces along Hallucigenia's back, and this is so I can extrude out all of his little spikes. Okay, starting over again with the spikes on his back, I just wanted to make sure that when I'm extruding these faces that you see, um, you can see that I'm adjusting a lot of the individual vertices and all of the edges at once, trying to just make sure that I'm extruding out a mostly square shape. Um, I just want all of the edges to be relatively even because when I extrude out the base of each of one of those little spikes you see, I'm going to extrude again um, to create the actual spike and I would like for them to be as even as possible. Adding some UV sphere eyes, probably my favorite step every time. Um, I love adding eyes like this. I think they just look like little beanie baby or stuffed animal eyes and especially Hallucigenia. His sweet little eyes are right on top of his head. Just adorable. And you can see now we're doing kind of the same thing I was before along his back, but now along the underside of Hallucigenia's neck, I'm extruding out these little faces so I can create... They're technically legs, but they look like arms, and in my heart and in my mind they are little arms that he holds politely together, but technically legs, but... Okay, rounding out his rump here a little bit, uh, adjusting a few edges at a time just to kind of round off his body and make sure um, there aren't any unexpected uh, topology problems, basically. More of those little square faces that I'm extruding out, just like I did with the spikes to create Hallucigenia's wonderful mini legs or lobopods bringing out the head a little bit to start making this model a bit longer. Um, <laughs> the early version of my Hallucigenia is very squat um, and very compressed. Um, we'll take care of that a little bit later, but I think it's very cute. Okay, you can see I'm moving some of the loop cuts in the leg backwards a little bit to try and recreate some of the curved shape you see for the legs in the reference illustration up in the top left. And now it looks like, yep, I'm gonna start extruding out little claws at the end of Hallucigenia's legs. Um, the way I do them here, <laughs> it just looks like he's wearing little shoes. <laughs> like he has very human little feet with little shoes on them. Um, yeah, so the end of each of Hallucigenia's main six to seven legs that you can see in the reference illustration, um, each of them ends with two claws, a pair of claws, or the backmost two pairs of Hallucigenia's legs each end in a single claw. I don't know why they only get one, but I support it. Okay starting to move the spikes down a bit and the legs and underside of the body upward so I can create a slightly slimmer, um, I don't know, he's very, he's just so big right now and Hallucigenia's body is very tube-like. <laughs> 
Okay, and we're making the legs a bit longer. Again, using circle select to just select lots and lots of vertices all at once and just dragging out and scaling out along the Y axis so we can make Hallucigenia a bit more narrow. Again, using circle select just to select bunches and bunches of vertices all at once and pulling the body down along the Y axis. And now taking little segments of the body and just bringing them down and around a little bit. If you look at the reference illustration, you can see that Hallucigenia's body is pretty curved and his back legs curve down and go backwards in a really interesting way that I found very challenging to replicate, but we'll get there. Okay, let's see. Okay, starting to add some loop cuts on the spikes, immediately abandoned that and decided to do something else. <laughs> Made some little adjustments to the tops of the legs. Very nice, bringing those loop cuts down a little bit farther and back to the spikes again. So you can see I've added an extra loop cut to each of these little spikes along Hallucigenia's back and I am making the spikes a little bit longer, angling them outward along the x-axis because when I originally extruded them, all of those faces that I extruded from along Hallucigenia's back are pretty much facing directly up on the z-axis, so they just went straight up when they should be not straight up, but going outward just a bit, so minor adjustments there. Added some more loop cuts to the top segment of each of his little legs, and now we are back to extruding out Hallucigenia's little claws. I try a couple different approaches here. Bring the legs down a little bit with box select, extrude out, wasn't sure what was going on, making the leg, the bottom of the leg, base of the foot a little bit more narrow just bringing those little claws downward so they're mostly level. And what I'm about to do is select the foot that I just made and duplicate it, move it over to the next leg, and then just kind of do some minor surgery here to graft the foot onto each leg. I did this to save time. I don't know if that's <laughs> if that was actually the result though. <laughs> Okay, so lots of duplicating of little Hallucigenia feet and grafting them onto their respective legs here. I'm just selecting each vertice and then I think I'm pressing... I'm, I don't have Blender open right now. I'm not even going to say what hotkey I think it is because who knows what kind of problems could... Who knows what could happen? Okay, so selecting the legs and looks like... Just gonna start evening out some of these little edge loops here. Sometimes if my edge loops are really messy um, in the earliest draft of a model, I'll just delete little segments and just create a new edge loop. I just prefer for the edges to be somewhat clean <laughs> where possible. And I say that and immediately start destroying the topology again, <laughs> naturally. <sighs> Okay, so I deleted that last leg that was on the very end of Hallucigenia's body because if you look at the reference illustration in the top left and an illustration that I'll add in just a few minutes, I think, these back two pairs of legs are interesting. They kind of go backwards um, instead of curving outwards and seemingly pointing in the same direction as Hallucigenia's head, like the rest of the legs. I'm not totally sure why that is. Um, I said earlier that those two back pairs of Hallucigenia's legs each have one set of claws as opposed to a pair of claws, and I don't know why that is either, but that is the way he is, and we love it. <laughs> Making some more adjustments, okay, grabbing individual, grabbing lots actually of edge loops at a time in the legs and using individual origin points to scale them all simultaneously. And then getting rid of my individual origins because it was causing lots of problems when I started posing Hallucigenia's head a little bit. Let's see, I'm using some proportional editing to try and recreate the curvature of Hallucigenia's body that you see in the reference. It didn't quite work the way I was expecting it to though, so got rid of that. 
just experimenting with scaling Hallucigena's body in and out on the x-axis to be a little bit more narrow, and doing exactly what I did before here, which was using circle select tool to grab lots and lots of vertices and just kind of space um, Hallucigena's body out a little bit so he wasn't quite so compressed like he was before. And here you can see, okay, I delete the additional claws on the back two legs, so he has his distinct singular claws on the back legs, back feet, back lobopods, whatever you'd like to call them. Um, and I've added an extra loop cut on some of those claws, like I am here, just to create kind of a curved shape for each of his little claws. It just makes it look a little bit more like claws and less like little shoes. <laughs> Lots of more little claw adjustments, and we'll start UV unwrapping. Always the most exciting part. <laughs> okay, yeah, you can see there I just added um, a color for Hallucigenia's adorable little Hallucigenia mouth. Um, he looks like he's always very surprised in every reference illustration I've seen, which is adorable. Okay, and you can see I'm just grabbing edge loops um, while I'm marking my seams for UV unwrapping. We're not going to look at- I have half a mind to just completely censor out the UV map in a moment when I do start unwrapping because it's going to be really scary and traumatizing to look at. Um, when I am doing a UV unwrap for a model like this where I'm not so much going to be painting an actual pattern onto the mesh, but just creating lots of solid colors in distinct sections. Um, if I'm just using the paint bucket tool to mark solid sections of color, I'm going to make a real messy UV map because it will not matter very much for my purposes in that case. <laughs> okay, redoing a little back leg here. Adding another little foot. Oh, I had to take, I had to back up and take a look for a second before I started extruding. <laughs> okay, and adding that little foot color there, and then I think, yep, we're going to extrude one more back leg. I had apparently miscounted Hallucigenia's legs um, earlier in the modeling process. And interestingly enough, if you look at that illustration that you can see on the top left now, that black and white one, you can see that Hallucigenia's backmost leg there is really, it just appears like it's just kind of stuck onto the end of him there. Um, so I'm trying to replicate that shape, but it was, I don't know what about it made it so challenging, but it was very difficult to feel like I got the placement quite right. Okay, just scaling in this little neck area some, bringing these front legs slash arms. They're technically legs, but I think of them as arms. They just, he just looks like he's holding three pairs of little arms right in front of him so shyly. So I kind of think of them as arms, even though they're technically legs. Okay, scaling the body a little bit along X again, just trying to play with the shape a little bit more and right here I think we're getting a lot closer now um, to the right kind of shape and size for Hallucigenia's body relative to his legs and spikes. Making some more adjustments to the spikes on his back here. You can see we have lots of cleaning up to do. Um, it's all good to move lots of vertices like this at the same time but as you can see, there will be lots of cleanup work for me to do later. Um, some of the spikes look very jagged and broken, kind of, and certainly don't want that, so I'll just have to fix it later, but that's okay. Yeah, already starting to make some minor adjustments to the spikes up there. Back to the legs for a moment. Decided to put it off instead. <laughs> And back to our good friend, UV unwrapping. So the main part of his body you can see there on the UV map a second ago, um, that looks about the way you would expect it. And then everything else is kind of nightmarish looking. 
<laughs> but again, my excuse in this case is these will all just be solid colors, so I'm just not too worried about making a very detailed UV map that I could actually paint on. But sometimes that's okay, like in this very specific case. <laughs> Okay, making a little material that we can add our colors to now and assigning it to Hallucigenia's mesh, going into texture painting mode, and getting ready to start working on a color palette. We started with this really bubblegum pink kind of color for Hallucigenia's body, which I just love. Um, all of the color palette work that I did for this model was just really fun. I think like at least, I don't know, easily two thirds maybe of the work that I did on this model was just trying different combinations of colors. Um, it was my first time ever getting to model an animal that we can't observe today. You know, like um, we have lots of preserved specimens of Hallucigenia, thankfully, and so we know a lot about you know, the general shape of Hallucigenia, but as far as color goes, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a guessing game as far as I know. <laughs> um, so I had a lot of fun um, getting to play with like a speculative kind of color palette for the first time. I'd never done that before and it was really cool. Um, so for these colors, um, I'll show, I think, a reference picture a little bit later, but Hallucigenia's current closest living relative that we have around on Earth today is the velvet worm. And so I took, I went looking for some photos of velvet worms. There's one, um, I believe, I think that's a red velvet worm pictured there on the left. Um, I was really inspired by that color palette. And since that is a living current relative of Hallucigenia, I thought it would be really cool um, to use those sorts of colors, and you can kind of see the eyedropper tool um, <laughs> zooming back and forth across the stream, the screen, excuse me, um, from my color palette there to the reference image, trying to just grab those colors. I thought it would work out that easily, but color theory does not work out that easily, unfortunately. Um, now you can see I'm I'm starting to move on to a more orange color palette here and you can see those reference photos on the left. You can still see the red velvet worm, but now there are some aquatic uh, marine worms actually in the reference photo panel. And those are marine worms that I just went looking for because while I love the color palette of the velvet worm and using that on Hallucigenia, I also wanted to try and look for something that was potentially realistic for an underwater animal like Hallucigenia who lived on the ocean floor in the Cambrian era. So I really liked these marine worms that I found and I really wanted to try to incorporate their sort of color palettes like you can see right now with the yellow spikes, um, the purple orangey kind of body, definitely directly pulling from that marine worm. And then I switched kind of back to the velvet worm color palette, kind of a combination of the velvet worm and that orangey red marine worm you can see on the right there. Yeah, I tried a lot of different color palettes. Again, as I said, I'm pretty sure like two thirds of my whole process working on this model was just trying out different color palettes because I found it very challenging, but also really fascinating and really fun to try and make semi-educated guesses <laughs> about what Hallucigenia could have looked like, while also, of course, just having fun with it more than anything. <laughs> He's looking very pinky, very orangey again at this stage. <laughs> I kind of thought about making just like a couple different almost like making different skins for a model. I kind of thought about doing that with like different color palettes for Hallucigenia that were inspired by a velvet worm or different types of marine worms, stuff like that. Um, but I'm really happy with the color palette 
that I ended up with, which we're slowly working toward at this point. Um, it was kind of a pink orange with darker spikes that I really, really liked. I did find one thing that was pretty challenging for me. I don't know that I fully understand why even still. <laughs> I found it really challenging to decide on colors for the legs for some reason. Um, I don't know, like if you look at the reference photos from before of Hallucigenia, a lot of the time, a lot of depictions of Hallucigenia show him having pretty much, yeah, you can see right there, like pretty much having um, similar colors throughout the entire body, including the legs. But, you know, I wanted to kind of reference his living relatives, uh, Velvet Worm, which very often have a lighter color on their underside that extends out onto their legs. So that was part of why I experimented with lighter colors for the legs, but it's definitely an extra little challenge. Like right here, I thought, well, I can use the same color as the underside of the body, but make the lowest portion of the leg a little bit whiter. But the effect, <laughs> the result of that was it looked like he was wearing little socks, kind of, like right now. <laughs> like right now, you can see in the 360s, um, whenever I zoom back out again. Yeah, it just looks like he's wearing little socks and shoes. <laughs> so I moved those edge loops down a little bit, and I'm not quite sure if I kept the white color there, um, or if I ended up removing it completely. So we're pretty much arriving now at the final color palette that I decided on, and now I'm just going to start selecting one spike at a time, opening up an ad additional view in the viewport so I can kind of keep an eye on the angle of these spikes as I work. Um, I wanted to make sure that they curved backward slightly the way that we know they did when Hallucigenia was alive, but I also need to make sure as I'm doing that that I'm not you know, making them a smooth shape along the y-axis, but a completely broken shape along the x-axis, which is highly likely to happen if I'm only viewing one perspective at a time or, or modeling only from one angle at a time um, without really paying attention, which I love to do. I love to model from one side with no regard for what I'm doing in the other dimensions um, that I have access to when 3D modeling. So just making sure to keep an eye on all of that as I go. Adjusting those loop cuts just a little bit more to curve the spikes. Um, I believe they're also called sclerites. Please correct my pronunciation in the comments if you know how to say that word. Um, okay, okay, and then here I started to play with the shapes of the individual legs a little bit. I kind of wanted to imitate, um, you know, the way in the reference illustration, Hallucigenia is walking, so all of his legs are in slightly different positions. It was too convoluted um, for a low poly model. It looked scary <laughs> when I viewed it like that in the Model 360. So I just opted for symmetrical legs and nothing wrong with symmetry. Okay, some final little tweaking of the color palette here and the leg shape, but this is pretty much all of the work that I did on this little model. Some more little minor adjustments, little details here and there, but that is pretty much Hallucigenia Sparsa. I am so happy with how this model turned out. It was extremely challenging um, and I was very worried it was going to be terrible, but you can see here I actually modeled Anomalocaris and Wuaxia and some Cambrian era plant life that I didn't learn a whole lot about, um, but I took a quick look and modeled what I think it looks like. <laughs> Of course, a couple more obligatory close-ups from this Cambrian scene um, while the credits roll, but thank you to members of Snoop Snorp Club for making this video possible and everything I do possible, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll see y'all hopefully next week.